Hey guys, <laughs> this is kind of a funky angle, um, but I wanted to show you how to do a little craft project. These painted books here, um, oh, it's backwards. I made these painted books. They say, it says, this is us with a little heart. Um, you can see it's got just a little fabric bow on here. just for um, cute little farmhousey decor. You can do any color you want. So what you need are some books. Um, these came from Dollar Tree because they're only a dollar. You could also do like a one by six or a two by six, I mean, and just cut it to book size. These are, I got, these are large hardback books. I just took the book jacket off and um, I'm doing four because this set I'm putting names on, but for whatever phrase you want. So I only used three for This Is Us. And you can see they're not all the same size. I kind of, I like to have um, where one's smaller than the, you know, that way they just look, they, they look cute versus them all being the same size. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do with these and it doesn't matter what color the actual books are you can see these are different sizes as well I've got blue black yellow um, There's a ton so if you don't want to use real books and you feel like you're ruining books Then you can do two by sixes and just like I said cut to size and lay them horizontally like this and paint them and then you'll do the same thing um I'm using these, like I said, I got them at Dollar Tree, dollar each, so, you know, pretty cheap. Uh, you could also do them vertically. I have not done a vertical vertical set, so, but you basically the same thing, but your print would be, you could do your print vertically instead of horizontally, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and do a horizontal set. So I'm just gonna lay these out. You're gonna need books paint. I've just got wax paper laid down here on my kitchen table so I don't get paint on it. I've got fabric that I'm going to use as the bow. You can use ribbon, um, any anything that you want. Sandpaper after they dry so you can just sand the edges a little bit. And then I've got a little cheap foam paintbrush. So I've got the first coat on um, the books there. So you can see I'm, I'm a messy painter. I've got paint all over my hands. But I've got the first coat on. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to put another coat on. I will tell you that if any of the books have a fabric, um, a fabric cover instead of paper, the fabric will soak in. So you're going to need a lot more coats of paint. So I try to buy the paper ones just because of that reason. Um, some of them are imprinted as well. Let me see, like here's another book. So this one is imprinted, um, the title of the book and the author is imprinted on the, um, the book spine. So you might need several coats of paint just to cover that up. Um, Honestly, you can't even, you can't even see. So like in the ones that I did, let me see if I can flip this. Okay, so the ones that I did, you can't even, I mean, you can barely see. Here's, here's mine. So you can't see the imprint of where the titles were. So um, I think I did three coats of paint on here and then you're gonna lightly sand. The, three coats of paint and then lightly sand the edges. So, um, I used a vinyl stencil 
Um, you can use stencils or you can freehand. Um, I will show you that process whenever we get further along. Okay, so the first coat is dry. And technically, if you wanted to do another layer or so on the spine, then you could. But if you wanted to leave it like this, you could as well. And um, you could even, like this one is, you can really see the um, black coming through and some people like that. So if you wanted to just touch up these edges here, uh, you could do that. I am, I actually paint this too because I like, the, I like it to all be one color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer on all of these books and touch up where you can see the black here, here, and then I'm gonna also paint the book here. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I've got, these are pretty well dry. So I'm just gonna take, I've got like a fine grit sandpaper. It's 220. Um, it's not super coarse. You can use whatever you have. If you do have the coarser, you just won't need to press as hard. So I'm just gonna go around the edges a little bit so you can see the color of the book underneath.
So now that I have them in the order that I want them to be in, I'm gonna figure out which way I want them on top. So these I'm, I'm doing names. So I'm gonna put this one on top and I've got some scrap um, transfer paper here. So I'm just gonna use my vinyl. Like I said, you can use stencils. I made my own, um, I cut vinyl and I did stencils that way. So I'm just gonna cut a piece here off. I like to reuse this, reuse as many things as possible. I'm just gonna lay that on top and I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna peel this off and then I'm gonna take the top book And I'm just going to center it on the binding or on the spine of the book. And I'm going to peel it off. Okay. I'm going to use my fingers and press down. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this black paint over here on my wax paper. And I'm going to take my foam brush, dab it in the black paint, and I'm going to dab on my stencil. Dabbing will help prevent bleeding. That's why I like this foam brush. For, okay, so I went ahead and stacked them and I went ahead and cut my ribbon and tied it. Uh, I didn't do anything special. I just, the fabric, you know how they're, they're folded whenever you buy it. If it's not folded or if you just have like some scrap fabric, fold it in half and I just cut it lengthwise. I didn't even um, measure or anything. I just... It's about four fingers wide. You can do it, um, you can have a skinnier ribbon or a longer ribbon. Um, and then to pleat, or not pleat, um, I don't know what this is called, <laughs> but all you have to do is fold this and then cut slant ways like that and it will make this little, is this called dovetail? I don't know what that's called. Whatever this is called, it, it does this. So you just fold it in half like this and you cut toward, you cut up slanted toward the where the fold is. And then whenever you undo it, it does this. So um, you can use fabric scissors. I kind of, I don't because I kind of like the fraying, gives it a little vintage look. And there you go. That's how you make the books. I am working on another set. I'm doing black, the same way as the white ones are, only instead of painting them white, you're painting them black. So I did the sides as well. And I will, I don't know what's going on these. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a name or not. So 
here's what those will look like. And you can use the same ribbon or you can use something else. Some people just use twine. Um, so this, I will, I will try to take a picture of all the ones that I've done so far and insert it into the video. Okay. So I just fold it in half like this and then go up toward the fold. There you go. That's it. Okay. So here is the finished product. I did four sets. Uh, this one was mine. So that's just here for, uh, show. And then I did this one, this black one, this one here, and then this set of four. Some people actually glue. I did not. You can glue the books together so they don't move. But if you tie this tight enough, some, some are tighter than others. Um, also, you can use twine, whatever ribbon, burlap, whatever you want to use. Um, like I said, you can glue the books together so they don't move. Um, I just leave them like that. They're just decor. They're sitting so they won't move anyway. But if you want to, you can. But that is, that's it. 